You have to talk. I do what? No. Yeah, we didn't. I, no, I Hi everybody, Aku Namaste. Oh Deepa, we have you in the right there in Lime the center. Light. Yeah, in the live light. In the spotlight. In the spotlight. Okay, now we'll change it. All right, here we go. So let me just go live and get ready. Yes. Okay. Now I'm just looking at the doors again. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Shall we begin with the prayer? Let's close our eyes, connect down to the palate. Inhale and exhale. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokakshi, to Lord Mahaguruji Meli, to all the great ones, especially to the great beings of knowledge, light, and wisdom, to Lord Christ. To all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the great beings of communication, our internets and our respective Wi-Fi's, to our soul and divine self. We humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance and divine protection, for the inner strength to have greater clarity and openness to the priceless teachings being given to us today. Bless us today with a deeper understanding of these teachings so we may be able to imbibe us, imbibe it into our system to become better instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste, guys. Welcome back to chapter 20. Yes, um, Amit was supposed to continue with what no, we spoke about because spoke we did quite a few. No, he did quite a few paragraphs. He said you'll continue. No, I finished. <laughs> I think so. No, I don't know this, uh, Mr. Cook Crook. Uh, that part only. The remaining, uh, the drunkard stimulant and all, I, I just summarized the whole thing. Uh, yeah. You can go ahead. All right. So, uh, keeping in mind what we were talking about, um, the condition of the medium remember we were talking about them uh, they become rather weak and uh, drained right so that's what we're talking about and uh, no you finish this whole thing you finish up to mr crook no i just mentioned that you said why are you mentioning it i said no, i just want to mention it no, this whole drunkard thing you finished yeah drunkard yes and the stimulants and all you spoke about already yes so then you mentioned this so you can start from here or from here <laughs> all right fine <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, Oops, maybe I, I'm making a mistake. Sorry, people. So going ahead, uh, we're talking about how a clairvoyant sees the same uh, seances uh, with reference to the medium seated there. And they say, for whatever reason, when the person is doing what they're doing, right, the medium, they somehow see that most of the energy is going out of the left side of the person. So it moves slowly out of the left side. Don't, in some cases, they feel that the whole surface Yes, the uh, etheric double or the etheric body moves out from the whole body all around it. And uh, this is the one that people actually start to see as some kind of a form, uh, a spirit form that starts to materialize somewhere close to where the medium is. Now they say that uh, this mold, right, uh, which, which is used to create this, uh, material, uh, this, this spirit form, which is material enough for us to see, they say it's sometimes not just the medium, but also some part of it also comes from the etheric matter of those who are seated around that same table. I'm assuming it's a table. So all, they call them the seaters. So not just the medium, but also those who are surrounding, yes, uh, who are part of that seances, are, are also contributing to the materializing of the spirit at that point. And so it continues to go on uh, to explain how Madame Blavatsky stated that during her uh, particular um, incident at uh, Eddie's homestead, she says that she deliberately, in this case, she intentionally molded the spirit to appear so that most people there could see it. And she says uh, uh, that was something that, that, was, that happened at that point. She, she just makes that statement there or an example, I presume. And then they say that this um, etheric matter molded into such uh, spirit form, any, any kind of material, uh, any kind of form that is visible to us, they say probably could also be 
photographed because you've got to remember that um, there are certain cameras that can picture uh, or take an image of certain types of light that our eyes are not really able to see. So that frequency of light, the photograph, the, the uh, camera is able to actually capture through photography. And so they're saying when this happens, right, when the, the etheric energy is going out and it emits a certain form, that's why it's visible to a certain extent to uh, people who are seated around. They say they could actually use the uh, photographic plate to try and get the image down. However, uh, they say that um, this is the rational of many cases on record with spirit forms that have appeared on the negative of ordinary ph photographs of people, right? So uh, people have seen this. They, they see that in the, uh, when they were actually taking the photograph, they couldn't see anything. But when they take a, a picture of it in the negative, remember we used to have those negatives in the old days, they can actually see it there. And of course, when they print it out, it comes as well. Right um, now, sometimes people also notice that with their own cameras, which is in on their uh, on their phones, uh, they take images and then suddenly they see in, in the physical view you can't see it, but in the camera they capture certain things that are floating around, or something that surrounds a person or around the person. Right, so this is uh, captured by the sensitivity of the lens of the, the camera that we're using. Yeah. Now, um, in addition, they say that to the matter of the etheric double of the medium, it frequently happens at seances that the matter is with, okay, this is the same thing that's repeated again, uh, which I mentioned earlier, that it's not just the etheric matter or um, the matter from the etheric double of the medium, but also people who are seated there that are used to help materialize this form. Yeah, so you want to continue and then I'll come back. It's not much, I mean, it's just information. Yeah, it's just it's information. good information, I guess. Uh, no way to validate this one, for me at least. Uh, but yeah, okay. So uh, something oozes out and it has a molded shape. It's made of etheric matter, sort of. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's why before in the old horror movies, they saw the ghost as, you know, like the bed sheet, just like a mold. <laughs> you know, that yeah. moves. <laughs> that moves. <laughs> so maybe they read this book or the book in the early 1900s and said, ah, that's what a ghost looks like. So, ooh. And remember, we said as the physical body starts to deteriorate, right? The eyes go like drooping. And that's why, if you look at the images of the ghost, uh, because the etheric double kind of uh, also goes through the same thing. <laughs> but that it, it really looks like a mold. Like, like a, really like a, looks like a mold. That's something important. dragged it down. Bed sheet. Um, <laughs> With holes in there. Okay, so basically, Madame Blavatsky, um, I don't know what she did. It appears that she physicalized the matter so that the people could see it because they're saying that um, usually they cannot see it. Uh, you know, this place, this takes place without any conscience of her birth. Uh, during the remark of Emma at Eddie Homestead, she deliberately molded the spirit form which appeared into base like this, these being seen by the sitters. So usually it said that clairvoyants can see it, but now even the sitters, anyone could see it. So maybe she physicalized it or maybe she uh, activated their clairvoyance. I don't know what she did. <laughs> but since they mentioned that she molded the spirit form, it looks like she physicalized it somehow. Um, or maybe the matter was so obvious to the physical eye compared to other seances where it's it's just like a light smoke kind of thing yeah like a pale white here probably it was more visible you, you see it's like trying to materialize so maybe she helped in materialize i think in one of the early chapters i said master Chua wanted to experiment with putting naphthalene balls around the room uh in the corners because naphthalene is always evaporating you know dematerializing so anything that wants to materialize cannot so it's safe Anyway, um, although etheric matter molded in such a spirit is invisible, blah, blah, blah. Okay, photography, that's good information. Pretty straightforward. Um, the etheric matter is withdrawn in from the bodies of the sitters. Hence, the lassitude frequently felt by those who attend seances. So, they, att they, they feel weak and tired. So, basically, energy is being, um, I don't know, not borrowed, but taken from them uh, to sustain the form. Okay? Um, and in it's only such okay this is you have to do this right the conditions are yeah. perfect passive 
passivity, passivity. That much matter can be withdrawn from the physical body without danger to life. Although the medium is usually conscious, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So without danger uh, uh, to life, basically in psychic self defense, we call this non reaction. So if you're uh, completely passive um, and you don't react, then there's no danger to life, there's no interaction. That's what it says, right? Anyway, you can go on. There's not much to say here. Yeah, it actually there isn't much. And you can remember we, we actually don't use any of this in pranic healing. So it's just information for us. Uh, we don't recommend any of you try this also. Definitely not. <laughs> yes, please don't. <laughs> Considering uh, what we've spoken about, the dangers of what can happen to a person who tries to uh, kind of get their double out. Yes, uh, let's just stay the way we are. All right, so moving on. So they talk about the... Kin they, when you want to do this, uh, they say you need to be as passive as, as possible, which means you and I are not active, um, not with the thoughts or anything. We, we, we literally become like um, just in the background. Non-reaction. Yes, yes. Non-reactive on any account. Because when we do that, then it affects uh, what is materializing and uh, the actual experience that is supposed to take place at that point. And so it says, you know, this gets recorded when you do this. Yeah, I Okay. No, it doesn't actually, it just spotlights. Okay, so going ahead. So when we talk about it, we, we say that uh, the person has to be extremely passive and withdraw from the entire physical form, any, any kind of activity, because if they do get active during the seances and they've been used as a medium, then it can even danger their life, which is uh, probably even cause death. So they say that uh, the medium is usually conscious of what is happening but they're more or less uh, kind of more in the background. So it goes on to say that um, any attempt to assert the individuality of the medium um, or to think connectedly immediately weakens the materialized form. So if the medium starts to become active, then the, the form that is being created out of their etheric matter starts to become weaker. So if you want that form to continue to materialize effectively, you have to take the back seat literally and be non-reactive. Yes, non, uh, as he says, uh, what did you say? It's inside self defense, non-reaction. No, okay, non-reaction, okay. I, I just use a different form of that. All right, yes, and so it says, um, now I don't know what it means when it says here that it brings it back to the cabinet. Right, so I presume it's got to do with language of those. Your days. body is the cabinet. Yes, I presume it's it's got to do with. And the organs doing... is your storage. I don't know. <laughs> so I would presume uh, I would agree with uh, Amit actually, uh, whether he's joking or not, because they remember they was, they talk about its attraction is going back to where it was, which was the body of the medium, the dense body of the medium. So that is probably true, but again, um, that's just our guess at this point. Yeah. Sorry, one second, I just lost it. A sudden shock, okay, in addition to the extrusion of etheric matter. No, 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 in my... Uh, One second. Where am I? Oh, yeah, not here. Um, I went to the next page. Yeah. Sorry, uh, apologies. I, I yeah. went to... Hey. <laughs> it's fine. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah? All right, sorry. And so they say a sudden shock or any kind of disturbance um, at... Any, any kind of uh, distraction at this point can actually harm the medium, right? And they say that uh, it is not apt because any attempt to seize, right? Sometimes people get so excited that they can actually see a loved one there or whatever, you know, the form that's being created. If they try to go towards it and, and disturb even that form, uh, they say that there can be a, a great risk to the medium. And they say the danger and may even result it's such it's so dangerous that it may even result in death yes so definitely not something we want to play around with or even try for that for that uh, matter so uh, to move on then they talk again about how they they're getting this energy out so they say in addition to the exclusion of the uh, etheric matter in many cases it's not just the physical matter of the medium that is used i understand but also the the physical body, the dense bodies, liquid and gases. And so they say when a person is actually used as a medium and she has offered herself in this process, while this etheric matter is being drawn out of her or him, 
they say that the person starts to actually shrink, right? The liquid probably starts to also reduce. And they actually talk about an example here. Uh, this is Mr. I don't know if it's Ellington. Uh, he talks about how when, when this process is happening, I don't know how they do, do it because they're not supposed to disturb the medium, but they are able to actually weigh the medium when she's in this process where she's given, you know, her etheric matter for the form to be created. When they weighed her, she was actually 40 pounds less. And interestingly, they talk about the form that's being created. I don't know how they weighed that. They say it's more or less that and a little bit more. So it was a little more than 40 pounds, which means, yes, it is the, uh, the, uh, material that was taken from the medium, but the extra that they can still uh, measure there was from the other sitters. So the etheric matter from the other sitters added to the mediums, whatever she or he gave, was more than 40 pounds. So this is what they were talking about in this particular um, uh, part of the book, yes? So it's not just the physical body that, uh, sorry, the, the etheric uh, matter that's taken out, but also from the physical body, the liquid and the gases as well. So to move ahead, they say, um, as to an astral entity who wishes to manifest himself, which means I presume at this point, the person is already dead, which means they've left their physical body permanently and moved into the next state, which is the astral state. So when they want to communicate. So what has been manifesting all this time? Huh? What has been manifesting all this? We're just talking content? about what the medium was doing. So when that form is there, then this astral entity ah, so now you're will then possess. The, so now the story starts from the astral, from the other side. You know, like those movies yeah. where you have half the story from the person experiencing it and the, the other half from. All right. So we're right? going. Yeah. So we finish with the medium's part at this point. At least the medium that. story has now uh, finished, <laughs> and now we shall start with the form at, story. At the same time on that day from the astral perspective. <laughs> so, <laughs> there was an astral man who wanted to manifest. And yes, then... he wanted to talk to his beloved wife, <laughs> who he loved so much and could not communicate for a decade. Anyway, so then uh, he wishes to now manifest and try and give his message across to his beloved wife. Now, this is our example. Huh? <laughs> it's not part of this. It's just a joke. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. So then, uh, since he cannot, uh, the astral entity cannot produce anything on the physical form. So what does he do? He then uses this etheric matter that has been created at that seance uh, to then become, uh, to then use it as an intermediary or a, a means of communication to allow what he wants to say to come out. Yes. And so uh, the astral force forces then work on the physical matter and then he's uh, most probably at that point able to communicate. So very similar to that ghost movie, if you can remember that point, yeah, where he, he literally comes into the lady, but it doesn't come into the physical form. It is into that etheric form. Uh, they'll come into that. All right. So to move on. Now, another example given here is very interesting. It's about a, a person who was addicted to alcohol and is dead. So they call him the dead drunkard. And so he wants to enjoy again uh, the, the desire and the taste and the flavor of drinks. And he realizes with his astral body, it's not possible because the astral body does not have uh, any of the physical organs through which you can actually taste, right? The taste buds and the gratification through that is not there in the astral body. And so <laughs> what he does is, if there is an option like this, then he will definitely take advantage of it. And so they go on to say, uh, he normally, now in those days, they call it the gin shop. Um, in, in the local places in our villages, we call it the toddy shop. Yes, or in modern cities, we call it the pub or the bar, right? So they usually hover around this bar or pub, hoping that at some point, uh, they will find someone who's allowing their etheric matter to be used, all right? And so, um, so they hover around this, this bar or pub or toddy shop, draw around himself a whale of etheric matter wherever he can find it because he can take it from sitters in order that he may then be able to absorb the smell of drinks, which, which he probably loved so much. Uh, and uh, earlier, like I mentioned, he's unable to do it. Right. So then what he does is he tries to induce um, and urges the persons around him to drink more and more and more and become drunk. And remember when you're drunk, your ability to control other bodies and vehicles is, is much less. And so 
he is then able to partially, as it says here, to enter into the physical bodies. Yes. And uh, he is able to experience the taste and other sensation he so ardently desired. Yeah. And so uh, when you go into that state, if there are beings like this around, they might take advantage of your body. Now, when you finish with your entire drunken state the next morning and you wake up, you may not just have a hangover. You might be extremely exhausted because someone else used your etheric matter. Right. And remember, when etheric matter gets affected, it blocks also the supply of uh, prana into your system. So, um, so the other part, uh, coming to almost the last part that I want to talk about here, is where they talk about this etheric matter uh, when, with, when it withdraws uh, from a medium. Sorry, sometimes the, the part that we're talking about, it's not the entire physical body that's taken, yes, uh, but they say only a part, like just the etheric hand is used, right? So it's just one part, uh, so the, the, or just the fingers, so only the fingers are used by this uh, entity. So the, through the pencil or the pen, they can actually write, yes? Or it is used to kind of tap and, and, and uh, messages are sent. So certain tapping would mean something else. Uh, a double tap or a, or a rap tap kind of thing might, might mean something else. And so um, there would be different ways in which uh, the etheric body could be used, yeah? So one is the hand, one, it could, one could be the fingers, Sometimes they can actually turn things around with, with the etheric matter, right? Uh, objects to be turned over or moved or so forth. And so um, I remember, I think usually these school girls like to do this. They bring that box and they try to move it around and get messages. You know, you've seen it in movies if you've Ouija never tried board. it. What is it called? A Ouija board. Okay, fine. The Ouija board. I, I, I never tried it. But uh, people love to do this, right? Trying to hope that there is something that would help them move this. So just the fingers are then taken over. So the etheric. Uh, fingers are taken over to help move things around. Uh, usually the ethnic matter as well as the dense matter is withdrawn from the medium and utilized so far to cover an astral shape thus sufficiently to, thus, uh, sorry, just sufficiently to make the latter visible to the sitters. So sometimes it's a lot more, not just the hands. Uh, so the etheric matter as well as dense matter. Remember we were talking about the liquid and, and gas earlier. Probably that's what they're referring to is taken out to create a proper astral, um, astral shape, correct? Mm. Yeah, so um, the form seen thus not being solid, but merely a thin film. So I'll stop there and hand it over to Amit. Um, very interesting. Um, what does it say? Um, so it says, like what Sumi said, any attempt to assert individuality or to think connectedly immediately weakens the materialized form, brings it back to the cabinet. Okay. The question is why? That's, you know, why, why would it weaken the cabinet? Why would it think thinking? Now, if our guess is uh, sort of accurate and it's extended out of your own etheric body, and you think of your own etheric body, what's going to happen is, uh, based on the principle in pranic healing, what we call the principle of directability, the energy from your extended etheric body will be pulled back. So obviously, that form becomes weakened, which is why it needs you to be in a completely uh, passive state. Right? That's the understanding I get about why it could weaken. And the second part is the sudden shock or disturbance, blah, 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 the highest de degree dangerous and may even result in death. So that is an attempt to seize. So there are two parts. One is the part where the person thinks about their uh, body, they're coming back. And then what happens is because they think of their body, it pulls the energy back, so it weakens. The other part is there's a uh, foreign element being introduced. Now that one, I don't know about death. I don't know. I've never experimented anything. But what will happen is it's, it's, it's like a mess because you have your own etheric body that you're using as a vessel which is extended for some energy being or something. That's what we're presuming to occupy temporarily, right? Um, it's like rental boots or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you're renting something like here. You can use it for some time. So that person, so you have your etheric matter, and it's still connected to you. 
and um, then you have the other person then obviously when it's going away from you th that amount of energy has weight yeah energy has weight how do you know shall we do the experiment here or you know when you feel uh, upset emotionally and you get to talk to someone you feel lighter <laughs> <laughs> and you say the weight has been lifted off my shoulders or when some burden goes away it literally feels like weight has been lifted out okay for example this is a presumption huh, based on what they've written can you put your hands like this just press the center of your palm tips of your fingers okay and just align them okay the pranicillas know what we're doing all right so you can just align them like this all right, uh, slight gap between the armpits. Uh, I'm not putting it because, you know, I'm just acting. <laughs> you connect your tongue lightly to the roof of the mouth. Just inhale and exhale slowly and comfortably. Just relax, inhale slowly and comfortably, exhale slowly and comfortably. Don't uh, imagine anything, don't visualize anything, just be neutral. Just be aware of the center of your palm and the tips of your fingers. So just inhale, hold your breath, be your center of your palm, tips your fingers, and exhale. And just do that a couple of times. Look, we have to experiment, otherwise, what's the point? So just relax, be your center of your palm, tips your fingers, inhale. Make sure your fingers are aligned. Okay, all right, now, you might feel something between your fingers, right, and your palm. Okay, some of you feel it. Okay, I don't know, because I'm looking at myself. What I want you to do, is I want you to just extend your arm a little bit, okay? And then move your hand like this. Move your hand like this, all right? Okay, and then lift your hand like this. Uh, is one hand heavier or is it the same? And now hold it back, hold it, and And then lift it up. Now, which one's lighter? Do you feel the difference, right? Okay, so, so energy has weight. <laughs> All right, now, if there's, now this is just air prana that we use a certain breathing technique which we teach you in pranic healing to pull between our, uh, our hands and feel the energy between our hands. But if, imagine there are grosser pranas like, you know, emotional energy and all that. So that's why you feel heavy when you're emotional. So similarly, that etheric matter has gone there. So the, the weight has been reduced to a certain extent. All right, uh, why are we talking now? Supposing you have that and then someone tries to grab it, but that someone also has an etheric body. So you have that person's etheric matter interacting with that person's etheric matter in a being who's infused into another person's etheric matter and you have a mess, <laughs> all right? So I don't know what would happen there. According to the author, it could even result in death. Could, but not will, all right? But it would just be a mess, <laughs> okay? Um, and many Koei cases uh, on record, blah, 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 all this explained. And to the asset entity who wishes to manifest himself or produce some phenomenon, blah, 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 somewhat process drunkard. You know, one time, Master Choa spoke about this. Uh, we asked Master Choa about this possession thing, you know. We said, Master, has there ever, you know, Master Choa, the founder of Prani Killing, because, you know, he's very good with energy. So we asked him, has there ever been like, a, is there a possession possible, like, you know, disincarnate spirit, or uh, taking over your body. Now, look, you have to take, I might be only 60% accurate here because this is a very, this is a story in a very, very long time ago. I have uh, only a brief memory of what happened, okay? So, uh, Master Joe said, um, we asked him, can you have possessed possession, like from disincarnate spirits? And according to him, he said, no. He says, at least from his point of view, in all his research, in all the interaction that he's had and with the healings and with all this, he's never seen a case of actual possession by disincarnate spirit. Most of the time, it's elementals. Okay? Um, and then he says, but, and to just summarize, because Sumi's already read it down and spoken to you about it, what he said was, supposing, at that time he gave one example, he says, supposing a person uh, has, um, you know, a person has died who really, really enjoyed drinking, an alcoholic. So because his desire is so strong, he gets earthbound to a certain extent. He's not willing to let go of that, right? And so he's looking, even though, uh, you see, the alcohol gives him pleasure and pleasure is emotion. 
is astral. So he still has an astral body. So he's still looking for his drink. But he has no physical lips to drink. So what does he do? So he finds the closest relative. Why closest relative? Uh, especially if the relative is grieving, that's even better because the cord is there between him and the relative. Okay, uh, There's the energetic link or what we call an etheric extension. You get me? So this guy would go to the relative who's grieving, you know, his uh, close relative and try and, you know, since there's a cord, interact with the astral body of the relative and say, drink, 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 drink. And the relative might go to the shop. <laughs> Look, this is 60% to 70% accurate. I do not remember. This is decades ago. Um, but this is the gist. He goes to the shop. He didn't say gin shop. He goes to the bar shop and starts drinking. And with the drink, you have the emotional body reacts to the drink. And so since that, uh, that relative, the dead relative is attached to the astral body and linked to the etheric also through the link, the person gets the joy of drinking. So the, the, etheric, so the uh, drunk is like, ah. So, so anyway, what? That was an interesting story. You know, Master Chomik is so simple. I would have not thought of it. When I read this, I'm like, ah, oh, he was talking about this. Okay, anyway, something like that. That's it, your drunk bed is done. I think so, right? Thin film. That's enough to talk. The thin film, yeah. Um, so, okay, usually etheric matter as well as dense physical matter is withdrawn from the medium and utilized to cover the astral shape just sufficiently to make uh, the latter visible to sitters and the form thus being not being solid but merely a thin film. But how does it do it? I don't know. No, we don't know. So I cannot talk about it. <laughs> Okay, so. All right, let's go. So now the next paragraph is, is still very sketchy for me. I, I myself cannot make complete sense of it. Hopefully Amit can add um, some, some thing to it. It's called a spirit uh, drapery. I told right? you, bed sheet. <laughs> or a With curtain. Two holes, the eyes. It is Noel's curtain. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's transparent. That's be long enough, but you see your legs. <laughs> All right, so, um, so the spirit drapery, however, so usual at seance. Just to be clear, spirit drapery is the film they're talking about. That it's film, film right? right? So it's just joking, it's not a bed sheet. <laughs> or a curtain. It's, you know, okay. from the It's frequently right. made from the, <laughs> now it's getting confusing. This is where I said I get confused. So it's frequently made out of the clothing of the medium or the sitter. So are they actually using the clothes of the person seated because they used to wear those, those kind of big, huge things? I don't know what they mean here. The texture may be quite coarse or, or fine, they say. Uh, finer, in fact, than any product of Eastern looms. Uh, they love the Indian clothes, uh, especially Indian cotton, by the way, in those days. Occasionally, such drapery may be removed from the seances and uh, sometimes they last for years, sometimes they fade away after a couple of hours, yes, or even a few minutes. So, what do you understand by this? Any product of Eastern looms. Uh, occasionally, such drapery may be removed from the seance room. Uh, sometimes they lasting for years, at other times fading away. In, uh, um, look. My first doubt was they're from two different authors, but both these books, Inner Life and Other Side of Things, are uh, written by Bishop I'll... Ledbetter. Oh. Um, uh, carry on, and then we'll look at it. I right. have a, so I have a doubt, but... Um, so I'm not too sure it's... what they actually mean, so let's see what Amit can uh, contribute. Are you right? I can more contribute every time. No, yet. just in case you make sense of it. Right, so then I'll, I'll tell you what I think as well. But for now, we just leave that uh, hanging for a bit. We'll just keep it there. So let's go to the next two paragraphs, which make more sense to me. So they continue to say that there is no question, uh, except possibly in very rare cases, uh, where and where every possible precaution is taken, the practice of mediumship, as I mentioned earlier, can be harmful and also dangerous, yes? So um, until and unless you really know what you're doing, it is not suggested that you take on this, this kind of thing as a profession or even to do it uh, for other people. And so it continues to say that it must be admitted that uh, by means of a large number of people, because of these seances, they've acquired knowledge and understanding that there is another world and that there is a link between death and life. Uh, 
and also that the people who pass away and go are okay right because most of them are wondering what happens to them um, however i think they they also feel that this information uh, they mention here on the other hand it may be urged that such knowledge of such beliefs could have been secured that means uh, kept secret still in order and less harm in a less harmful way so maybe even if they were able to do uh, and communicate with the other side maybe the method could have been kept more secure or maybe more training to be given to people who want to do this so they don't harm themselves um, or uh, cause a lot of difficulty in their physical forms rather than just someone who could just do it because they feel it's happening and it's working so they go on to say those people who are from the school of healing right they talk uh, about people who are exposed to white magic when they try to do this they do it very differently they definitely don't want to interfere with the etheric double or the etheric body of someone else and they definitely don't want to use their own etheric body right so what they do instead is they would simply condense and build uh, into and around the astral body sufficient quantity of the ether around right and help it materialize so remember we were talking about madam blavatsky before we started so when she tried to materialize it i think this is what she probably did she didn't actually use her own etheric double but the astral form that wants to be there she just condensed right made it more dense around that astral with the ether or the uh, the matter that was just around instead of taking it from the people who are seated or from from herself and then what they do it they hold it together in form uh, through will through will they are able to keep that uh, ether in that place in that shape uh, for as long as it is required till probably in this case the communication is done once that's down then they are okay with it right so definitely not a great way um, to try and communicate with the other world what we've been talking about so far as a medium it can be dangerous that's the first point secondly if they wanted to get people to do this more and more uh, since it does help them understand uh, another perspective rather than just physical life they're saying that it could have been done in a better way right uh, i would think of it as being better formal training so people then would know how to deal with it and where are the uh, problems and issues and they don't get affected and of course they mentioned those who already know white magic they know what to do they definitely don't work with etheric matter of anybody around theirs or others all they do is just uh, condense ether from around and allow the astral form to then do what it needs yeah but just like we learn in pranic healing you have your your intention or your will has to be strong enough to contain that ether for that long that period of time as long as required so that uh, communication can continue that's all i have to add <laughs> spirit trickery now considering that in the context that they're talking about they suddenly shifted books okay that's oh. number one right whose book is this it's a different both the ship led peter but different times and okay. different context yeah mine mine is a e book and it doesn't have those uh... so um number one you're talking about in the previous paragraph uh the medium utilized so as to cover an astral shape just sufficiently to make the latter visible to the sitters right so th this is what is being done but by using the etheric matter of the uh medium hey sorry <laughs> the medium bit me <laughs> all right by using the etheric matter of the medium they uh, you know use the dense particles and they make it um, what do they call they form uh, make it visible by uh, you know not being solid but merely a thin film now in white magic they don't use the etheric matter of the medium they use etheric matter from the ether we will come to it all right number 2 there can be no question uh, that uh, what spirit drapery however now you have to observe spirit is in question mark in quotation mark but i think drapery should be the one in quotation mark because if i am not mistaken uh, what bishop let be is talk about and this is just a wild guess a uh, bishop let peter is talking about the the aura or the etheric matter the film that's you know around the person 
Are you with me? Okay. Right. So you're talking about etheric matter and then more dense uh, physical matter combined with etheric matter on the outer layer. So you are made like a body, like a shell, right? And then that is being uh, infused or, uh, you know, possessed or taken over by this, uh, by this form of being or whatever. Now, this process could be called spirit drapery. All right, this process could be called spirit drapery and it is made from the clothing of the medium or the sitter. So it is borrowed from the energy body of the, let's make it simple. It's basically the aura, from the aura of the, okay. uh, of the medium or the sitter. So to create this spirit drapery, so what uh, the, uh, uh, Arthur Paul is trying to do is try and show you different books, same similar things. So here they call it spirit drapery is, is used to take energy from the energy is taken from the sitter, from the medium or, or both or either or and used to create like a drape for them to physicalize and to be seen. Okay. Now, why do I think now, now the texture may be quite coarse. Now instead of saying coarse, I'll use the word gross. All right. The texture or the, uh, the quality of energy of this medium of this uh, shell could be either gross or fine in fact finer than eastern looms now eastern looms you have to understand like in kashmir they have knots per square inch and you know they're super fine sometimes they have thousand two thousand knots per square inch that's a lot you know so um so the the you have to understand the weaving of the etheric matter is so fine okay all right so do it no? So yeah. you're muted. I don't see anybody. Yeah, you talk. You can look at this. So um, nevertheless, it must be okay. Where? What? What? Yeah. Occasionally, such drapery may be removed from the science room, sometimes lasting for years, and at other times fading away an hour or so, or even a few minutes. Now, after the science, now you have created this shell. Now, sometimes part of that shell remains after the seance is finished and the being is gone. There is an unoccupied matter remaining. So sometimes it lasts a few minutes, sometimes it lasts a few hours, and sometimes it lasts a few days, yes. right? years. Okay. Uh, so there is a requirement of cleansing of the seance room very regularly to ensure that all the uh, byproducts from the seance has been removed. All right. Uh, does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, why do I think drapery? Drapery, robe, all of these things have been used since ancient times to, to depict uh, or to talk about auras. To talk about auras. Like one of the things we talk about in basic pranic healing, to talk about the principle of transference of energy, uh, because you can't talk about healing until you understand that energy can be transferred from one person to another. So in order to, one of the things we do to, to en enforce this example or to you know, display or give an example of it is uh, we talk about the story from the Bible about uh, this um, a woman with a bleeding disorder who wanted to be healed by Jesus, but Jesus, um, uh, but she couldn't reach Jesus because Jesus was surrounded by so many people. Okay. Um, and um, <clears throat> she wanted to be healed by Jesus. The, so, you know, it's like, you have to understand, if you see Jesus, he, he's the teacher of the age, right? He's like, he's the Shah Rukh Khan or the, or what do you call, who is a good uh, Hollywood celebrity now, whatever, celebrity of that time, right? So, and if you look at normal teachers, they're always surrounded by disciples, right? So she couldn't reach him. So all she could do was touch the hem of his robe, okay? She just touched the hem of his robe and then he stopped and he says, something has happened someone has touched me. Now, if you read the story very carefully, it's really strange because Jesus is being squeezed like a sardine. So when I read this story, I'm like, you know, the disciples must be wondering, can you imagine like if you've ever been in a crowd, say if, you've, if you're from India, if you've gone to Tirupati or any temple or place like that, you understand there's a crowd, you know, people are touching you from all angles. And now suddenly Sumi will say, uh, something happened. Someone has touched me. I'm like what? You know, have you ever thought about it? It, it? it doesn't make sense because he's being squeezed like a, you know, like a, maybe a can of sardines. What is the vegetarian example for that? Anyway, whatever. What do you get packed? 
big beans. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so, so there, he's like squeezed, right? So then he clarified. He said, someone has touched me. Power has gone out of me. And she's like, ah, it's me, my Lord, and I'm healed. Okay, whatever. Forget about that part. But when she touched the hem of his robe, that robe was not, might not really be his robe, might be actually the aura, the aura. So she plugged in. By touching just the hem, it emphasizes plugging in. She might not even actually, in real life, touched him. Okay, and we speak about how this is possible in pranic healing. It just like symbolically touch, but actually she plugged into the aura. Okay, now I was reading this Guru Granth Sahib, uh, which is the Sikh, um, one of the Sikh books. And in that, I don't remember the exact uh, uh, phrase. It says, from the karma of his past actions, the robe of his physical body shall be obtained. Something like that, okay? Anyway, if you read that carefully, again, it does not make sense, <laughs> right? Uh, what is, so if you want to, if you take it literally, it means this. If you want clothes, you want a robe, you need to have good karma, <laughs> okay? Otherwise, no clothes for you. <laughs> So you see a naked person, ah, you're a bad guy. Yeah? So obviously, they would not write that in the Guru Granth Sahib. So what does it mean? The robe in the old days, you have to understand there's no electrical engineering. There's no concept of electricity. So the robe is something that follows the silhouette or contour of the body, right? The, it's just like a free, so it's just like the aura which follows the contour of the body. So the aura, the etheric body is obtained by the, uh, by the design of the etheric body is made from the karma of your past, okay? From the karma of your past. And um, that is one of the examples I use when I used to teach in Punjab for um, achieving oneness because we talk about a seed from where the design comes from. And based on the karma, the design is done. All right, so that is there. And even in the Bible, so I'm just telling you all this to teach you about the robe, but, uh, even in the Bible, I think uh, there was a time when uh, Jesus was healing a blind person or he met a blind person. I don't remember the exact story. You remember the story? And uh, someone asked him, one of the disciples, the apostles asked him, uh, uh, who sinned? Did he sin or did his father sin or something like that? Yeah. Right? Because the guy was born blind. The, the person was born blind. So the disciple asked Jesus, why was he born blind? Did he sin or the father sin? Now, if, you, if your body was not designed based on your previous karma, then Jesus would have been like, Boof, what's wrong with you? There's no karma in the past. If there's no karma in the past, how can you be born blind? Why would you ask a question like that? <laughs> Do you understand? So if you're born blind, then, and anyway. So, so yeah, that's your whole concept of the drapery. I have to explain the what do they call the basis of the the assumption, okay? And then and then we finish this chapter. Don't worry. And then uh, the trained occultist for uh, occultist, for example, connected with uh, any school of white magic would never interfere. Blah blah blah. Obviously, we would not do that. We would not project a portion of ourselves outside and say, okay, guys, you want to take over? Come on. <laughs> All right, let's party. Okay, now he would simply condense and build around his astral body a sufficient quantity of surrounding ether, blah, 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 blah. Okay, basically, in pranic healing lingo, those of you who are pranic healer, he projects prana, a lot of it, and stabilizes it. Okay, so he creates an energy ball or energy thing. That's all can be said for now. That's my assumption. Okay. And then that's the vehicle. But it's like a fixed battery. So I think when it, ex when it gets over, the person has to go. So uh, remember we were talking about even earlier that uh, when this form has to be created, it's from the etheric double of the sitter. Uh, the, sorry, more the uh, medium and then also some of the sitter. But the problem is when the entire thing is over, like he said, right? And there is that form that's created. It pollution. has to go. Yes, it has to go back. The problem is when it has to go back because it's mingled with the energy of the sitters and the medium, what goes back to the medium may not be just his or her etheric matter. It by, might be a mixture of the sitters and including that, uh, the vices and other, the other issues of the person. And so we call that contamination. So not just that when you are doing this, this so-called um, seance 
and you are the medium that you are able to help someone. Problem is the end result is that you can get further contaminated and you don't even get probably your own energy back, right? It's like when you play with money and you're given the money and then when the money comes back, even if you win, it may not be all your money. So we have to be aware that there can be this kind of the, the switch of uh, etheric yeah. matter that can cause problems also. And remember the person who's most, um, the weakest link in that group is the medium, right? Because she has actually, or he has taken herself back into the background and her matter has been used maximum. So that uh, medium is the, is the weakest one and gets affected quite badly. So uh, that's something you have to remember. And it says, uh, this is almost certain and most uh, and the most sensitive person there is the medium uh, who's present. And they continue to say nicotine and alcohol poisoning appears to be especially liable to produce unpleasant effect in this manner. So for me, it's like, you know, you take it little by little, every day you start to smoke or whatever, and then after some time you get addicted. And so that becomes a problem. Maybe that's the reason why also uh, they go into substance abuse um, and, and get into uh, different types of addictions. So let's go back. Now here they're talking about the spirit guides, right? So they talk about the spirit guides um, are aware of the danger of what will happen to their mediums. And so uh, they do try to protect their mediums as much as possible. But strangely, they say even the spirit themselves um, may occasionally suffer when, for example, in, in, in the form of materializing, uh, the, they say a materialized form is struck or wounded owing to the intimate connection established between the etheric matter of the materialized form and the astral matter of the spirit body. So again here, for me, it's basically a lot of contamination that's, that's beginning to occur. I'm yes, I'm, I'm okay, okay, fine. So basically, they again talking about the dangers. Now, the spirit guy, um, I'm not sure of the spirit guy that, that is present to protect. And then they talk about the spirit itself. Yes. So the spirit is the one that you are creating with your astral matter. And uh, there is a mingling of the astral matter of that being, sorry, not. Uh, my etheric, if I'm the medium, my etheric matter with the astral matter of the being that's coming or the entity that's coming in uh, to be used at that seance. So there is that contamination also that occurs. Yes, that's my understanding there. And so they say, uh, as we know that physical weapons, yeah, whether it's, it's even a pin, cannot affect the astral body of any entity. However, they say here, but an injury to a materialized form Yes, that is the form that's being created, may be transmitted to the astral body of the uh, phenomenon known as repercussion. Right. So basically, we're talking about contamination uh, that's beginning to occur uh, in the seance uh, between the entity that occupies the form. And secondly, when that entire thing is over and uh, it's time for the matter to go back to its source, it can again go to the wrong source. And not all the energy of the medium comes back to her or him. It might be mixed with others. And just to end before we go um, to the last part. Now, depending on the kind of person the medium is, <clears throat> she or he will attract similar entities from the astral world. Right. So that is another thing to, to remember. And so you, uh, <clears throat> if you are not very evolved, you might actually and bring in these entities and if the person is not developed enough not just the medium but the people surrounded they might actually just attach themselves right they have a they have a rented space for free and they can occupy it whenever they want and do whatever they want so that can become a, a further issue and so they say uh, cases are known this is the last paragraph where uh, some outside entities either incarnate or excarnated um, seize upon the body of uh, people. Interestingly, they say when they're sleeping, right? Now, so remember again, if your body is not too strong, that's the only time they can come and possess it, right? And so they say they can either be sleepwalking to, and, and they get people to do what they want. Hopefully it's just eating ice cream or chocolate, right? And uh, this, is, uh, this would be most likely to happen with a person who's a medium. That's the end. As it get, it's getting more and more interesting and the chapter is over.
The weapon is cool, but if we talk about that, then you know that can be misused. So. <laughs> Attacking astral bodies. But if you can bless, you can attack, right? And we have three, four. If you can bless people who are dead, you can attack people who are dead. They don't have a physical vehicle, but they still have emotional, mental vehicles. Anyway, we're not talking about that. Yeah. The person who has left their physical body permanently. So owing the fact that materialization may blah, blah, okay. So you already spoke about the concept of contamination. And of course, if some of the sitters are, so say the medium is a vegetarian, um, uh, exercises a lot, um, uh, you know, does yoga, the energy body is very refined compared to a person who smokes, nothing against smoking, but it, it makes the uh, uh, energy body more grosser uh, than the people who don't. And especially people who are, you know, vegetarian or they're eating a lot of pork, which contains also a lot of gross energy or heavy energy. Um, and the energy particles are heavier. So that goes into her. Then the circulation of her prana, the body is used to refine the energy channels. It will be affected. So that's, that's basically contamination that they're talking about. And mediums of low type inevitably attract eminently. So that's like attracts like. So if the person is... A person um, who's, you know, always angry, emotional person, they'll attract, um, me, you know, astral entities who are, you know, or people who are dead, who are more earthbound and who are more aggressive also. Okay. And cases unknown where either blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, so that would be interesting how they do that. You know, if you could find someone, I wonder whether their astral body fuses with the etheric body and the nervous system of the body temporarily. And then, so when they eat the ice cream, they feel the pleasure. Who knows? What? <laughs> I just said that anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's why. It's <laughs> no, no. I meant, I, I, I couldn't think of anything else. So just ice cream and chocolate. I'm just thinking of ice cream right now. So. <laughs> Maybe that's why I got it. No, I said after you said it. No. All right. So um, just a couple of things. Yes. When you talk about the fingers, which are um, the etheric form of the fingers that are taken over by an entity that is called auto writing you're correct about that uh you want to answer some of these others is it being recorded yes you do the rest <laughs> <laughs> please uh how are these spirits different from elements <laughs> elementals they're very different because these spirits are people who are probably dead that's my assumption here they're people without who have no physical body but have an astral body and who are earthbound or in the process of moving up Right. Yeah. Uh, and then this is what was discussed when a person allows himself to be used as a medium by creating a form with his own. But what happens when a person is not creating a sexual form yet used by other entities? What happens? I have no idea. Just get your body strong. And like I said, there are no cases of possession as the way we would call it in, uh, you know, rumors that people are possessed and all. Most of the time, these are elementals that are very old elementals taking over the different chakras of the body, especially if you've done psychotherapy, the Ajna and the Solar and these ones, which control your will and your actions. So, and the basic and stuff like that. So that's why it, it seems that the person is possessed. And, but like I said, there are cultural elementals, there are Buddhist elementals, Hindu elementals, there are religious elementals, there are, you know, different languages they can speak and stuff Victorian. like that. Victorian elementals. I mean, From different eras. You know, like I said, in the sea, there are many creatures. So, you know, it's just how they are. And they're very naughty, some of them. How can we know that Sorry, this can I just is add something? Yeah. Yeah, there, uh, it's also mentioned in the book. Uh, there can be partially use of your etheric body at that point for them to get their desires or to get some information across. So um, this has been a question by different students uh, in different parts of the world as well. And so all I say is you really need to start working on keeping your physical, yes, your physical body really strong, emotional and mental body, right? Because the weaker you get, and every time you've been used, uh, if it is even partial, you start getting weaker and weaker. And so you really need to get out there and start. And, and the person who was talking about whole bunch of experiences that she has and, and it really bothers her because she's scared now to go out. But the problem is that you can be at home and still get affected, right? But going out exposes her more, uh, all these people. Uh, uh, and they usually very, very, um, I mean, when you talk to them, they're very loving and very sweet, but internally they're very weak. Yeah. Just so make your body strong. Laura. Start with the physical body. Making it strong. And like attracts like, so. Go ahead. How can we know that this is really energy and not a mind trick? I've asked myself about it. Are you talking about the hand thing? Are you talking about the hand thing? It could be I anything. Presume. I think even the form. 
I don't know about all that. I've not done all those things, the seances and stuff, right? So, You've not about, seen it either. But so. about this, um, you know, uh, hand thing. No, the not the hand thing. She then, came. She came with this question much earlier. Ah, uh, okay. I we were talking the form, the uh, the kind of astral form that's created. Is that a mind trick, or is it actually happening? Well, I have no idea. I've never seen it, nor have I experienced it, so I cannot talk about it. But we're just trying to study the book. Correct, and if it's written by these uh, great authors who have so much more knowledge, and many of them clairvoyant. I think uh, we'll have to give them some benefit of the doubt. Some, and, yeah. Temporarily, at least. Yeah. Till we that, are able to Is that the uh, etheric that. material of the drapery containing etheric material of the owner is utilized in science and hence used up over time? Or even yes, earlier? Tano. Yeah, probably. You got it right. Yep. Okay. okay, so with that, we are done with the chapter. Tomorrow is uh, India's independence. Uh, I believe it's Korea's independence and oh, Pakistan's ooh. independence. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, for us uh, who are Puranic healers and are yogis, it's our teacher's uh, birthday. It's the founder's day, as we call it. So for those of you who are Arhatic yogis, yogi, uh, tomorrow morning, we'll see you at 8 o'clock. We'll start off with the preparatory uh, practices, after which those of you who are in levels can join us to continue with the levels all the way to level mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, there's a program that's open to all, so you and your family members could watch it. The Acharyas are going to be talking, as far as I know, uh, Master's family, uh, all the children will be talking about uh, Master Chua. It's his day, yes. Hopefully it's not going to be too long, uh, but do get a nice bowl of popcorn, chocolate, ice cream, yes, sit there, uh, so you don't get too bored. Um, and you can enjoy yourself tomorrow. We will meet you again on Monday, right? Uh, that will be the 17th of August. We move into the next chapter. The next few chapters are really long. Yeah, they're not very short. So we'll try and see if we, we don't go too much into detail. If it's not necessary, we make it more crisp and uh, easy for us to assimilate. Yeah, all right. So also what? Aja Ekadashi. Okay. Okay. I don't know if, if I pronounced it well, uh, right. And also, yes, it's, it's also the day of, the, is, uh, it's also the day of um, the assumption of Our Lady, who is Mother Mary. Yes, uh, the, the mother of Jesus. Uh, they say that she actually kind of moved. Actually, she moved from a one level of initiation, if you can call it in this, to another, right? Uh, she, she actually evolved really fast. Anyway, so that's tomorrow. For now, let's put our hands together. And let's say a thank you to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Prem Nasuchokot, Sri Lak Maha Guruji Nene, to all the great ones, especially to the great beings of knowledge, light, and wisdom, to all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your patience with us. Thank you for helping us have a clearer and deeper understanding of these teachings. Thank you for helping us assimilate this knowledge and use it to be effective instruments to help manifest your plan on earth. We thank you in full faith. With gratitude, respect, and love, we thank you. Thank you, everyone. Atma Namaste. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. Yes. Uh, and we'll see you Monday evening at yes. 6 <laughs> Bye. And uh, we'll continue with the Twin Hearts meditation at 6 p.m. So if you have other people who would like to join, this is purely for COVID-19, uh, please allow them uh, the access which is given uh, on the Facebook page, yeah? also under World Brand Healing. Thank you so much. Bye. Enjoy. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Ending for all. Bye. <laughs>